Hey guys, welcome to the Escape Simulator workshop tutorial or the Room Editor tutorial. So you need to go to the workshop and first of all I'm going to show you a room that we made and that we will make in this tutorial. So it's called Basic Tutorial Room. You can download it uh, via the workshop. So let's press play and I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We're just going to make a simple room. Uh, with some mobile furniture and this so we got this chest here and something like like a closet here and there's this suspicious lamp so you can press it nice it opens up uh, there's two items here I'm going to take this black one and I'm gonna place it on a slot so we will learn about items and slots and then this uh, this box will open up. We got another item, this key. And basically, what we're gonna do is to place it in the door. The door will open, and the room is one. So this is what we're going to make. Basically, this room. And if these are the things you need to learn, uh, please check the rest of the video. And I'm also going to talk about some of the basic functionalities. Uh, of the workspace in the editor. So let's get started. Okay, so before we dwell uh, in how to make a room, let's get used to the editor. So you go to work workshop, you go to your rooms, and let's create a new room. Yes. Okay, so this is the first screen that greets you when you enter the editor. You can press right mouse button and look around. You can use WASD to walk around, basically fly around. So we have this little small room here. If you press play here, it will test your room. You can walk around. This room is kind of boring, drab, nothing, nothing inside it. So let's make it more interesting. First of all, I want to make it larger. So you press this button here, the little house, and then you got pluses. And the pluses do exactly what you think they do. They increase the size of the room. Uh, if your room is too big, you just use this X tool, and I don't want this, and I don't want this. So you'll notice that this part here doesn't have an X. This is the basic cube you started from, and that one cannot ever be deleted. Uh, you can make holes like this, so you have one room here, one room here, and use it to like teleport a player or for multiplayer. Okay, I want to remove this and remove this, I just want to have this 2 by one room. Uh, if I want to change the walls, that's really simple, so I select the wall I want, I want this wall here, and I want this space wall over here, and <clears throat> I'd like uh, maybe a medieval wall door over here, that looks nice, and we need a window for our room, so let's place a medieval window here, and I want to change the floor a bit, so maybe I'll place a sand floor here, and no, not the medieval, but let's place it here. Okay, and of course you can change the ceiling, so I want these holes, so a little, a little light comes to our room. Okay, so let's press play, nice. So we got this interesting looking room made from all different types of walls. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to show you is how to put basic objects in the room. So as you can see you've got these different uh, themes over here. Uh, so let's say I want to play something from the Egypt theme. I open the Egypt theme and maybe I want, I don't know, a pot. I place it inside the room just like this. You, you just press around. And now I want a table so I can go like a Victorian and search for furniture. Or I can just go here, furniture, and see all the different furniture we have. We got some tables here. I'm going to use this one, it's called desk. Uh, what's nice to know is if you place the desk uh, ad ad adjacent to a wall, it will align pretty neatly, so you don't have to do anything about that. Uh, but your camera has to be aligned to the wall. Okay, so let's place a wall here. Okay, so I'm going to show you three different type of uh, objects. So this uh, desk will be a static object. Once you select an item you placed, like this big uh, properties menu will appear here and you can move the item, you can scale it, I'll show you that a bit later, but first what I want to show you is this. So this desk is static, 
I'm going to place this this one as draggable, that's fine. And I'm going to put this chair inside and I'm going to make it pickable. Okay, so I've got something like static, so I can't do anything with it, it's just here in the scene. This is draggable. Uh, basic physics properties will apply on this object and I've got a pickable object, this chair, you can pick it up and then you can put it back in. Obviously it scales down but yeah it's kind of funny to have it like that so you can play around with those options. Uh, another thing you can do if you go inside this table it's not blocking you so what you can do you can go inside and check this is obstacle option so oh, when I press play I can go through it, so that's that's good, that's what I want. Uh, okay, I'm going to delete this object with X. What you can also do is hold Shift, Shift, press X. This deletes both objects at the same time. I don't want these faces anymore, so I'm going to press X. Uh, so now what I want to show you is, I'm going to place this table. To show you what you can do in the editor with uh, the move options. So, you can play, press W, E or R, or you can press this little gizmos here. So, we got the move gizmo, that's W, we've got the rotation gizmo, that's E, and we got a scale gizmo, that's R. So, you can scale on any axis you want, so that's pretty simple. Another thing, what you have, you have this global and local axis. And uh, that means that when you set it to global, so the axis will be aligned to the room. However, if you place it as local, you can move the table on its local axis. So that allows you to move it much, much easier. Uh, another cool option is if you go to the rotate tab or press E, then you can press T and it will rotate the object by 90 degrees increments. Uh, you can hold shift and T to rotate it uh, in another in another angle. Okay. Okay, so let's delete this desk, we don't need it anymore. <clears throat> and let's start working on the room. So in the basic room I showed you before, I used this stone table. I'm going to place it in the center of the room this time, maybe like this. I'm going to set it as obstacle so I can't pass through it. And now I need to make a door. Uh, in this version I'm going to make it a bit different, so let's find, let's make a shape. So this basic cube right over here, scale it up like this and like this maybe. So what I want in this tutorial is to have two doors that will open like this. Of course the pivot of the door is the center, so what we need to do is we need to find a hinge, so we can find a hinge, uh, maybe somewhere, somewhere here, let's see. Hinge, 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 anything can act as a hinge, but I'm sure we got some actual hinges. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to use this lock hinge, I'm going to rotate it, uh, not like that, maybe like this. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to rotate it, and it's going to open like this, it's going to clip, but it doesn't really matter at this point. So what I need to do is I need to parent this white door uh, to this hinge. And what does that do? So now this hinge is the parent of the door. They move together. Uh, they actually, oh my bad. Uh, they actually delete together if you delete it. And most importantly for our animation, they will animate together. So what I want to do is I want to make hinge an animation object and I want to edit the waypoint of the hinge just like this okay so what does it mean this means that the hinge will animate like this in 0 0.5 seconds and another thing I forgot to do is to set the door to static so I can pick it up so this is fine so let's press play oh nothing happened so, of course, nothing happened because we haven't assigned a button to open this door. So, uh, what we need to do, we need to make a button. Uh, anything can be a button, so let's make a lamp. Why not? And this lamp will be a button. And a button is an object you can press. So, let's see what happens. 
Well, of course, nothing happens because it's just not doing anything. So, what we need to do is we need to connect the button to the hinge. So, once you press the button on press, the hinge will do its action. The action is to rotate. So, let's try. It works. Uh, but if you notice, there is a short delay in the hinge because the button has duration of 0.5 seconds. Uh, so let's set it to 0.1 seconds. Let's press play. Okay, that's exactly what we want. Uh, another thing you can do is edit the waypoint of the button. So once you press it, the button will animate. So let's see. Okay, nice. And of course, now we need another set of door here, and another hinge. Uh, we can just select this hinge and press Ctrl D. That duplicates it, and now we got another hinge and another door. What we can do now, we can scale it on this axis. So make it minus one. And now we got an exact replicate of the door on the other side. And we just need to connect it to the button. And now when you press play, both open. That works like a charm. Okay. Okay, so we got our button or our lamp. We got our two little doors. And let's make let's make a chest. And then we need some items that we'll place next to the chest that will open it. So we can go to back, maybe to the chest tab and select well we can select the same chest. This toy chest, uh, the rotation is kind of wrong, so I'm going to rotate it like this. And I want this to open. So what we need to do is we need to make an animation. Edit waypoint. To open like this, confirm. So you can see the original rotation of the object here in the ghost and where the object will animate to. Let's confirm. Now we need uh, we need some items. So in the tutorial level, I used I think this board game pieces over here. I think this blue one and this black one. So let's scale it up a bit. You can use Shift to multiple select and then scale it. Oh, that's too big. Like this. This is fine. Okay. So now this box is pickable, that's not good. Let's say it's static. This is fine. And this is pickable. And this is pickable, that's fine. Now we need a, <coughs> a slot. I'm going to place this black thing here. And I'm going to set it to static. So let's see what happens. Okay, nice. Open this. Pick up this. Uh, nothing happens. That's kind of the plan. So what we need to do, we need this, we need a slot. Uh, so we're going to enter this logic elements group. Let's ignore most of this for now and just use this slot object. So place it here. And a slot is basically a place where you can place an item and it holds that item. So we got keys and we got reject keys. So I want the black key to be the correct key. So I'm gonna press black key and I want the blue key to be the wrong key. So this is the key that's going to be rejected. Now inside the ghost, you see this outline and that's how the item will be placed. So if I place the item now, it's inside a slot, but it's completely wrongly rotated. You need to rotate the slot. So you need to rotate it by 90 degrees this side. And now it's kind of flying, so let me just drag it here. And this looks fine. So let's see what happens. Okay, so what we need now, we need a key and we need a door. And that key should fit the door. The door needs to open and that needs to finish the level. So let's use this door. It doesn't fit this uh, hole, but that's completely fine by me. It needs to open like this. So let's set it to animation. Let's set it waypoint. 
maybe like this, this looks fine, confirm. And I want to set the duration of that animation to 2 seconds. Uh, next we need a key. So let's go to the key group and maybe select this blue triangle key, that looks nice. Okay, and then we need a slot, so logic item slot, put it right there. And we need to connect the slot to the key. Okay, so how does that look? That looks completely wrong, so let's rotate it. Uh, like this. Uh, doing this completely wrong. Okay, this is fine. And a bit here, here. Okay, I want it to fit perfectly inside, so this is good. So now I've got this slot, I've got this key, and let's see what happens. Nothing. Of course nothing happens because we need to we need to do this. We need to set the animation. We do it by this animation type, rotate key. So we want the key to rotate. I think that's the Z axis. And I wanna do like two seconds as turn duration and wanted to make two full circles so let's see what will happen one circle two circles okay next thing I want to do I want to make the door open when the key is inside so I need to on place connect to the door so once this key is in the slot once it animates this door will animate as well so let's see did we do this correct one, so maybe I need to make this a bit faster, yeah. Nice, works perfectly, but what's this? The key is floating, that's not good. So first, let's make this much faster. And the second thing we need to do is we need to parent the slot to the door. So now the door, when it's rotating, it will have the slot. And the slot already contains the key. So let's see, did we do this correct, guys? one and two nice so the last thing we need to do we need to make a ending so besides the slot we've got this finish object here so this little flag from formula one you can place it anywhere it really doesn't matter you can scale it do whatever you want with it it's just a logic object that's not here in the game however if i point the door to this flag. This means when this door will be completed, animated, to the end, this level will be 1. So let's see how that works. Use the key, let's animate, and nice! Nice, nice, nice. So let's stay. We pass this room, but this key really shouldn't be here. We need to place it in this little chest. Okay. Not like this, but like this. We can rotate it a bit. Okay. Let's press play. Button. Oh. Nice. I need this black thing. Need this blue triangle key. Put it here. And... Victory! Nice. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to decorate the room a bit. Maybe add a couple of, I don't know, maybe a chair. Oh, maybe a couch if you want to sleep on it. Uh, it needs a barrel, of course. And what else? What else? What else? We can add this brown sofa. So, for some more. Somebody who really likes to sit lives in this place. Okay. So, this is basically a room that you can make on your own. And I highly suggest that you try making a room like this after you watch the tutorial and uh, from here we'll move to a bit more advanced stuff so i hope you guys uh, enjoy this and please visit uh, discord or post questions on forums uh, for anything uh, related to questions to the editor good luck <laughs>